some residents in the township have brought parts of that area to a standstill last night following clashes with foreigners who own shops uh, where Ahmed is. Now, the unrest, which was led by the Dudula movement, led to police intervention. The movement says it's embarking on a campaign to take back the country from foreign nationals. Let's get your sense of both sides of this discussion now. Bring in the chair of the Dudula movement, that's Msaza Tatsi, who joins us via our telephone line. Dr. Vusu Muzisibanda is the chairperson of the Africa Diaspora Forum with us via our video link. To both our guests, thanks very much indeed for your time. It's lovely to have you on the program. Msaza, if I can begin with you via our telephone line this morning. Um, interesting the mission that the Dudula movement has in a context where even residents in Alexander aren't all in full agreement about what should happen to foreign nationals. So on whose mandate are you running, I guess, is the first question, when you are pushing for the removal of foreign nationals in the township? I can't hear you. Your line is uh, it's not clear. Essentially, my question, question sure, with pleasure. Essentially, my question is, not everyone in Alexander agrees that foreign nationals should be moved out of the township. So whose mandate are you following in the campaign that you're embarking on? We are following the mandate of the community as we are the ones who, who, who voted for our government because we can see that the government is failing us. So as the community, we have voted for the government. Now it's for us to help the government so that because we, can, we see that taking time, the foreign nationals are coming here in numbers. And we are dying as a society. We are dying in the township because of the same foreign nationals are killing us, are raping our children. Our children, they are not going to school. They are, taking, uh, they are, uh, they are also taking drugs. How can a foreign national uh, come, uh, come to another country and change the values and the norms of the country? Besides, uh, let's be honest, though. The foreign nationals are living in Alexander because they are being accommodated by people who are, in some instances, born in Alex. There's a conversation to be had about why it is that those people are accommodating the foreign nationals, sometimes in their own yards, whilst other people are calling for them to leave. You know, you know it's painful because these foreign nationals, they were there for some time in our township, but now because of... But but now, because now they are in numbers in Alexander, it's when now they see that the next, because now everything, I can't, the, the line is, is very bad. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm, I'm actually struggling to hear what you're saying too. So let's do this, Amsaza. I'm going to ask that the team try to redial you or reestablish a different connection so we can hold on to every word that you're saying um, so as not to misinterpret, I guess, the sentiment you're trying to convey. In the interim, Dr. Sibanda, let me bring you into this conversation. Sadly, the conversation itself is not moving forward, despite appeals from various sectors of society for, I guess, greater mediation around how there can be a meaningful cohabitation between foreign nationals and people from, uh, you know, places like Alexander. What do you reckon is the spot that we're missing? Where are we falling through the cracks here? Well, uh, thank you very much. I, I think the biggest challenge that we're having is that um, for, for quite some time now, you know, the operation has been going on and they keep saying that uh, they are not happy with what government is doing. They are helping the government because the government is failing to protect, you know, the people of South Africa and the South African economy. But the way they are going about, you know, um, showing their satisfaction with government is wrong because, you know, in terms of the law, if they want to demonstrate and picket and protest, they must do that peacefully without confronting people. The problem arises when you confront people because that on its own becomes a violation of the right of those people who are confronted because people will have to try and defend themselves. And this is what we want to avoid at any other instance to say, as much as we understand the right to protest, but we are saying that what they are protesting against or what they are trying to do should not be to go and close businesses, which obviously affect the economy on its own, the people that are employed, you know, that end up not um, being able to work. And as a result, people will try to defend themselves and we end up having the kind of anarchy that we saw taking place in Alexander. Remember, this is not the first time we have seen people being kicked out of their houses, you know, in Alexander and, and, and Orange Group in the past from 2019. So what we are saying is, this is what we have also extended to, to do, you know, leadership, that we need to sit down and agree that there is a methodology that should be used in order to try and express their views that they are not happy with. But to make sweeping allegations and say foreigners are raping us, children are not going to school, all those allegations are based on 
either a foreigner, one or two foreigners that will be caught uh, doing, you know, criminal activities, which we have since said that, look, crime is crime, whether it is perpetrated by foreigners or locals. We must fight against crime together. And if there is a demonstration against a particular action, we are willing to work together as long as there is no confrontation of people which is going to exacerbate the situation. Yeah. Msaza, um, hopefully you're able to, to hear us a bit better now. Let me bring you back into the, the discussion. I mean, you know, the point I was making earlier is that, ironically, the foreign nationals who live in Alexander live, in some instances, inside the yard of people who've been residents in the township for years. What I'm struggling to understand is, it seems there's no conversation around those people who want the foreign nationals to leave the township and those who are accommodating them because they get economic benefits from doing so. Dr. Sibanda, you're calling for a guest better mediation. Who's best placed, do you think, to do that mediation in a context where appeals from government, it seems, have fallen on deaf ears? Well, unfortunately, yes, uh, calls from government seem to be falling on deaf ears. I mean, and, and we have also tried, we are trying, we're still trying to, you know, uh, get, I mean, uh, in touch. Uh, we, we exchanged, you know, um, uh, contacts and we're working on coming up with a date for a meeting because we feel that at the end of the day, if we have a situation like what happened yesterday, this is going to keep on, you know, um, uh, portraying a wrong image where, again, I mean, migrants are going to be seen as the wrong ones because they fought back when, in fact, the ones that fought are the ones that went and closed their shops first. Because we are saying if the migrants are not supposed to be operating where they are operating, let us leave this to the law enforcement agents to go and stop them Department of Labor to go to these businesses. And I think the minister has said that. We are also seeing, you know, the policy on the employment of uh, migrants that the government is actually introducing, which shows that the government is listening to the people. The government is trying to do whatever that it can to try and understand the cries, you know, of the electorate. But um, so in this particular instance, we are only appealing, I think, to this leadership um, that we need to sit down and agree on a better way forward. Other than that, you know, I think what is going to happen is that ultimately the police might end up being forced, especially to arrest, you know, some of these people for actually, you know, inciting violence. Yeah, such a multi-layered issue. Thanks very much indeed for your take. And look, there are so many things at stake here. It's not only about the economic opportunities that are seemingly being taken by foreign nationals. Conversations need to be had about what happened to the Alexander Renewal Project. That was meant to ensure that everybody in Alex benefits from that. And I imagine those are the type of questions that need to be posed in part to government as well. But for now, Dr. Wusumuzi Sibanda, thanks very much indeed for your time. He's the chair of the Africa Diaspora Forum. Also joining that con uh, conversation was Msaza Zati, who is the chairperson of the Tudula movement that was involved in those clashes in Annex yesterday. Without a doubt, a big story we'll keep watching for you throughout the course of the program.